Here is your latest African news. Kenya. Country orders probe into fire claims against UK troops. A Kenyan court has ordered the UK and Kenyan governments to address a dispute in which British soldiers are accused of starting a wildfire during a training exercise causing damage to a wildlife reserve. In March 2021, a fire in the privately owned Lol Daiga Reserve in central Kenya damaged roughly 12,000 acres of land. A lobby group and over 1,000 local residents filed an environmental complaint accusing the UK Army of infringing their right to a clean and healthy environment. After the British Army claimed sovereign immunity, the court said it had jurisdiction over the case and ordered that the matter be handled by an intergovernmental liaison committee, which will investigate the claims against the British soldiers and oversee resolution of the dispute. The judge also stated that the UK government will pay compensation to affected residents if British troops are found liable for the claims against them. The British government will also be obliged to restore the damaged environment if the soldiers are found to have been negligent. Mali. Thousands of Mali ancient transcripts go digital. Google has partnered with Mali's traditional leaders to digitize tens of thousands of ancient manuscripts from the city of Timbuktu. The digitization project will showcase work done over the last seven years to preserve the documents. The manuscript contains centuries of scholarly work on topics ranging from mathematics, medicine, astronomy, and science. Up to 40,000 pages of the documents will be available online. The collection, known as Mali Magic, also contains online interactive tours of some of the country's most significant historic sites using Google Street View. Southern Africa Tropical Cyclone Gombe to hit Mozambique and Madagascar a new low-pressure system named as Gombe, which has recently formed in Madagascar and evolved into a moderate tropical storm, could reach Mozambique on March 11th, Mozambique's National Institute of Metrology, INAM, announced. According to the forecast in the INAM statement, the system could reach the Mozambique's channel and approach the Mozambican coast soon. Tropical storm Gombe could influence the weather in the provinces of Cabo Delgado, Nampula and Zambezia with the occurrence of heavy rains accompanied by thunderstorms and strong winds. Over the next 72 hours, very heavy rainfall will be experienced and expected to continue over most of Madagascar except over southern area. These provinces are still reeling from the recent ravages of storms which passed through the country earlier this year. INAM says it is monitoring the phenomenon and is appealing to the population to continue to follow the meteorological information and the warnings disseminated by the competent national authorities. Somalia UN boss wants AMISM troops to remain in Somalia. United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres has recommended to the Security Council that the African Union maintains its staffing level in Somalia through the end of the year. The African Union mission in Somalia, AMISOM, comprises 20,000 soldiers, police and civilians tasked with supporting the country's fragile government in the fight against insurgents. The AMISOM mandate expires on March 31st, but the UN Security Council is expected to vote on March 30th to replace it with the African Transition Mission in Somalia, ATMIS. In the letter delivered to the Council on Monday, Guterres said he prefers a plan to gradually reduce ATMIS in four phases to enable and support Somalia security forces to take primary responsibility for security in Somalia by the end of 2023 with complete military departure in 2024. The UN chief added that under the plan ATMIS, fast reduction of 2,000 troops would not happen until after December 2022, with more decreases in every phase. Eritrea Elon Musk urged to launch internet link for Eritrea. Eritreans residing in different parts of the world are pleading with South African-born U.S. billionaire Elon Musk to provide their nation with internet access to end a long-standing blackout. The call comes a few days after Mr. Musk, the founder of SpaceX, launched a satellite internet service via Starlink for Ukraine to keep Kyiv connected to the internet, which was disrupted after Russia invaded the Eastern European country. 
In Eritrea, barely 1% of the population has internet access due to U.S. sanctions. Using the campaign hashtag Starlink for Eritrea, pro-Eritrea Twitter users, mainly in the diaspora, are calling on the billionaire to help their country with internet access, similar to what he deployed for Ukraine. Due to devastating sanctions from the West, Eritrea has one of the lowest internet access rates in Africa. A report by the International Telecommunication Union shows that only 1% of the country's estimated population of 3.6 million has access to the internet. Uganda Government proposes a year in jail for public spitting. The Ugandan government is proposing a law that makes it criminal for individuals found spitting in public a habit that is deemed to be dangerous to public health. The proposed Public Health Amendment Bill 2021, if passed by Parliament, would impose a 12-month jail term or 150 currency points, 800 US dollars penalty, or both for the culprits. The bill was tabled before Parliament last month and is being scrutinized by the Health Committee. The government contends that spitting comes with advanced health consequences that include the spread of diseases. However, medical practitioners under their umbrella body, the Uganda Medical Association, UMA, have protested the clause advancing arguments that spitting is a biological function which is a response to the disease in someone's body. Ghana Ghana mine owner seeks to buy Chelsea Football Club a Ghanaian businessman is reportedly seeking to become the first African owner of an English Premier League club with his bid to buy Chelsea for 3.1 million US dollars. Bernard Antwi Bosiako, popularly known as Chairman Wuntumi, is a gold mine owner and politician whose reported offer comes as a surprise to many in Ghana given he is relatively unknown in the sporting world. He makes his money through gold mining and also owns some radio and TV channels. He has not disclosed how much he is worth. Chelsea's Russian owner, Roman Abramovich, has been hit by UK sanctions following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but his plans to sell the club have been put on hold for now because of government-imposed asset freezes. In an earlier statement, Mr. Bosiako had indicated that his lawyers and transaction advisers were in London to commence negotiations with Chelsea's owners. Top football stars like Manchester United's Cristiano Ronaldo and Paris Saint-Germain Lionel Messi are among those he said he hoped to sign if he is successful with his bid. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. Great news! You can now buy our African children's book, Maua and the Gardens of Plenty, a book that teaches children the power of great ideas. This book is the best way to start exposing your children to African stories told by Africans. Find the purchase link in the description below. You can directly support this new series by becoming our YouTube member, Patreon or donor. And remember, Africa is watching.